If you plan on doing any kind of post work to your renders out of Lightwave, you might want to take advantage of accessing the internal render buffers. And there are several ways to go about doing that, um, but I thought we could take a look at the Photoshop PSD export image filter, uh, which is a real quick way of gaining access to these uh, separate passes uh, and then being able to work with them in Photoshop or a, a compositing package that will will import a PSD file, which nowadays is, is pretty much all of them. So let's let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to hit Control F8 to bring up the processing tab on the effects panel. And I'm going to come down here to add image filter and we'll choose Photoshop PSD export. Okay, double click and it opens up our options panel. And you don't have to turn on everything. It depends on what you want access to. I'm going to go ahead and, and select the uh, specular reflection, diffuse shading, shadow, specular, and uh, that's specular color up here, and this is specular, and then uh, background, which would, of course, separate the, the background, which in this case is just going to be a solid RGB value. Uh, and if you want, you can add even more. Here we've got diffuse color shading and specular shading, for material, we've got raw color, mirror, luminosity, transparency, diffuse, special. Uh, that would be the, the special buffers. Um, motion, uh, if you want to uh, have X and Y. And for geometry, I am going to go ahead and select um, depth. And for um, uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and select geometry as well, just so we get a raw geometry render. But for the depth, I'm going to actually change uh, from 32, knowing the scale of, of this, I'm, I'm going to set it to, to 5, um, from 0 to 5. We'll get a better uh, depth option out of this. We can also change the ranges for all of our, when we have the custom range, if you don't want it to be from 0 to 1 or like 0 to 100%, you can uh, change the range there, but I find that I usually leave that um, leave that to default. The only uh, thing that we need to do now is sa show where we want to save it. So I'm going to go over here to image and I'm going to call this rocker. Okay, And it'll put a version number at the end of each one. So if you were doing a sequence, uh, you could uh, just say rocker and then it would be 00, 001, 002, 003, um, and, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and close this down. Now, all we have to do is uh, do an F9 or an F10, and it's going to save it to that folder. Now, the reason why it's an image filter, even though it's really an image saver, is that by being an image filter, it's taking, it's, it's able to access those different internal render buffers. So that's why we have, uh, we have that here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this down and do an F9 render, okay? And there's really no reason to save this off. You can. You can save it off as a whatever file you want. Uh, but it's going to be over in uh, the, the final image is going to be in the, the PSD file in the Photoshop document, uh, as well as the internal buffer. So we, there's really no reason to save this unless you just want to save it as a, a different format here. So we'll hop over to Photoshop. And I'm just going to load up that document we just created. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different layers. So for every one of those options that we selected, for every one of those internal buffers that we were looking for, we've got uh, a different layer. Now, you can end up with a lot more layers than this if you wanted to have all those other options. So the very top layer you can see is the final render. And if you turn that on, you're not really seeing a change because all of these stacked up are equaling the, the final render. So well, why would you want this? Well, if you wanted to do post work, um, that could come in, uh, this stuff could come in handy. For instance, if we wanted to, we could go to the specular layer and just lower the opacity. And you'll see that the specularity, the spec hits on, say, like the leather, uh, and the boots is coming down. Or if you want to um, intensify that, well, we could just grab this layer and duplicate it. And now we've just intensified the spec and we could lower that if we want. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that layer. Uh, if you wanted to, you could come down here to the shadow pass. I'm gonna bring that up above. Let's just turn on that final render. And I got the shadow pass. If I turn it to say color dodge, well, the shadow's gone. Okay, and, uh, and so we can just click that on and off. So uh, we can, or I could intensify the shadow if I wanted to. I'm just going to drop that back down. 
So you can go in and do all kind of post work if you want. You can use the depth pass here that we saved out. Uh, let me just drag that up. Okay, we've got the depth pass. We can use that to uh, create a depth of field, like a blur. We could blur things in the background or things in the foreground. Uh, we could uh, add fog and that kind of stuff to our image just using this depth pass as a, a selection. Okay, so lots of different things we can do once we're in Photoshop or a compositing package, but by using the PSD export, it, it gains us access to all these different passes, these internal buffers that we can use to adjust our final render.